up, guys? And welcome to episode 17 of Mr. Millennial's Revenge. I'm your host, Nick DiMaria. Thanks for tuning in. On today's episode, which is January 20th, 2021, ding dong, the witch is gone, right? (laughs) Uh, Biden's first day in office, you know, how can you not talk politics when a presidential inauguration is historic in uh, in its nature as it it is, and, uh, but yeah, end of a fucking error, am I right? Um... You know, I try to say that I wouldn't get too much into politics on the podcast, but, you know, the history buff I am and the state in which the world is, it's hard not to comment on the what's happenings and and everything else related to that. Oh, I was trying not to uh, comment on the insurrection that happened on the 6th because it was actually, like, really upsetting me because... You know, Trump is so fucking terrible that, you know, how who was surprised, basically, you know? And, uh, yeah, man, I've said it before on the show. I'm just, I'm over it. I'm over COVID. I'm over the pandemic. I'm over watching people suffer, um, knowing that we have approached or we have reached the one-year mark of the first case and this shit is still, like, with us. It's still fucked up. And I'm just glad that the adults are in charge again you know and i was saying earlier to a friend i i miss the days of you know um criticizing and disagreeing with politicians and especially the president based on policy you know as opposed to because i have a problem with his uh love of the style of the ss (laughs) you know like trump is a nazi trump is a fascist and he's fucking gone and i hope I hope that the, you know, the state of New York goes after him. I'm glad he's getting impeached and I'm glad that Biden's in because you know what? Biden was never my first choice, but at least I know where his heart stands. You know what I mean? It's like, at least I know he means to be a good person, you know? And if you were watching his speech today, you would understand that like you would see it because, you know, he said things like if you've supported me or not, or if you support me or not and all that stuff, I'm still like, you know, I'm still going to represent you. And that's what a fucking leader does. Not this them against us bullshit that started, uh, you know, in, in 2017 with uh, Colonel Fuckface. So, you know, all right, I'm going to leave it at that. Congratulations, ladies of America, women of America. Uh, you know, I, I, I applaud your efforts to keeping this country on track. If it wasn't for the women voters of America, uh, Trump would probably still be president. And uh, so I really appreciate you much more than usual, <laughs> I guess. And, uh, and, and, I, and I just, you know, Kamala Harris being vice president is important. You know, the first female uh, uh, vice president of the United States of America. That is monumental. Long overdue. Glad it's her. And uh, again, you know, you don't have to agree with them on policy, but at least you know she's a decent person. <laughs> you know, like I want I, I look forward to the to debates about, you know, uh, 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 politicians like approach in policy as opposed to uh, are they secretly collecting Nazi memorabilia and keeping it in their basement? You know, so uh, yeah. So congratulations, America. Hopefully we can get over COVID faster than we were going to and, uh, and and get back on track. Um, and on today's episode, I did an interview with vocalist and educator Fernando Franco, and it was so great to catch up with her. Uh, again, haven't seen her since pre-COVID days, and, uh, you know, it was nice talking to her. We did a uh, little listening. We did, we, we did a deep cuts session again, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. So, 
you know, give that interview a listen uh, coming on right up. But first, the housekeeping. Mr. Millennial's Revenge is a production of the New Haven Jazz Underground, which is a grassroots community-based organization dedicated to producing concerts, clinics, and jam sessions in the name of jazz in the great city of New Haven, Connecticut. And we need your help. Please uh, become a subscriber at patreon.com slash nhvju. Uh, we are a completely crowdfunded organization, um, which gives us so much liberty and so much wiggle room because we don't have any financial overlords. There's nobody we have to please to uh, put on a concert. We don't need to grovel to anybody except the people. And that's where the power is. Am I right? So please, if you want to become a subscriber, you can do it for as low as $2 a month. You will never miss that money. You won't even know it's gone. But uh, please sign up for at least, uh, uh, you know, if you can, the $5 mark is the best one. But um, but for as low as 2 bucks, you can become a financial supporter of the NHJU. And uh, do that at patreon.com slash NHVJU. So, yeah, uh, really excited to have Fernanda on the show. Um, and uh, I, I actually didn't mean for... Um, her interview to line up with uh, Kamala Harris's inauguration, but I, I, I like it. I like the, how serendipitous it was. Um, Fernanda is a wonderful musician, a wonderful human being, and uh, I feel like we're celebrating her and Kamala's monumental achievement and women just in general as we enter this new year. So uh, very happy to uh, present that interview with uh, with you guys. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, like I said in the last episode, going into the studio uh, this weekend, really excited to be recording uh, the second volume in a 13 uh, thirteen chapter series I'm, I'm producing based on Stephen King's The Dark Tower. Uh, um, as I said before, in, in, in The Dark Tower saga, there are 13 crystal balls, very similar to the one in Lord of the Rings. And uh, uh, they each have power. They're, they're only mentioned, um, and only one is actually seen. Oh, two, I'm sorry. Only two have uh, actually been seen in the books, uh, one being Black 13. And uh, back in 2019, I did an EP called Black 13. And, uh, and the next one coming up is called Indigo 7. And, and the thing is, is that I'm not going in order. I'm just going in, you know, I'm just picking a color and going with it. Um, and... Uh, what I like about this project is I'm going to be re-recording some tunes and, and recording some new ones. So with Black 13, uh, I re-recorded three of my originals. This time around, I will be redoing two originals previous, previously recorded uh, and then doing three new songs. So very excited, very excited to be working with my, uh, my two... Uh, long lasting collaborators, uh, Andrew Kasiba and Andrew Zwart. Uh, I think I'm going, this is, this is Zwart's, Zwart and I's 10th anniversary, 20, uh, uh, two, 2011 is when we started working together. And uh, I've been working with Kasiba since 2007. So I love these guys like brothers and uh, it's always great to work with them. And at this point they know uh, what to expect of me in terms of uh, compositional style. And, and, and they're always, uh, it was funny because uh, we're rehearsing the tunes and the two of them were kind of like muttering. And uh, I said to Brian Sudo, the guitarist, he kind of looked at me and I said, they're just, they're just nitpicking. They're, they're figuring shit out. And like, it's, it, it was funny because it's like, we've worked together so long and they've recorded so many of my compositions that they, like, we just have a process now and it's fun to have the three of us, but then, you know, other, uh, you know, newbie, newbies, uh, enter the, the creative uh, bubble and watching their reaction to, uh, Kasiba's war working together because it's very I'm sure it's kind of like a little a little intimidating because it's like it's clear they're on a certain page you know and uh, like I said Brian uh, on, on guitar for this one uh, I've always been a fan of Brian's playing he's such a sweet guy um, we always uh, we always uh, uh, talk about Mike Moreno I love Mike Moreno's playing and, and so does Brian so uh, Naturally, I think that kind of drew us together compositionally. But we we play a lot of duo together, and he he always um, he's you know in rotation in my quartet. So it's uh, it's nice to uh, you know throw him in the mix, and then uh, and then on drums, my uh, my buddy Ryan Ham, who's been on the show. Uh, uh, I've I've known Ryan since he was like sixteen. Uh, we we worked many years together, gone on the road together. So it's a lot of fun. 
Um, I'm really excited to mix the old with the new. I feel like this is a good band, good lineup uh, of musicians. And uh, like I said, we're going to be doing some originals at Firehouse 12, which is, you know, my home away from home. I've done almost all of my records there, and uh, it's always great to work uh, with Greg DeCrosta, the chief engineer over at Firehouse 12. And, uh, you know, you're just treated like a professional. And uh, what I love about Greg, <laughs> and he knows this because I tell him all the time, He's the kind of engineer that just hits record. You know, he sets up the mics, gets the levels, asks what you want, hits record, and leaves you alone. Because he's not one of those. You know, maybe maybe it's just me, but when I was in the tsunamis, we we had a we had an engineer who had to give us his two cents on like the composition of the tunes, and that shit drives me crazy. It's like you know, I don't tell you what <laughs> you know what to do on your end of the of the booth. You know, I appreciate any in, any input when asked. I don't need someone button in. I'm sure that sounds really mean, but I think I I, I know what you mean. It's like, uh, or I hope you know what I mean. It's like I'm I'm just talking about someone trying to produce your record for you. You know, and and Greg, complete opposite of that. He'll tell you what sounds good if you ask. He'll he'll uh, support you in any way you need him. But he's really just like behind the scenes, and it's great. And he's always a pleasure to work with. And he's another. Uh, you know, grumpy old Italian. So it's nice to catch up with him all the time. <laughs> so uh, we'll probably argue about pizza and uh, and and uh, all kinds of uh, desserts and and baked goods uh, that are available down the street. So uh, really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, so so it's called Indigo Seven. It'll probably be out later this year. I'm I'm assuming probably closer to. 2022 hopefully sooner um you know there's only five tracks hopefully not too much mixing and i can get it out quick especially when it's just a digital release it's a lot easier you know so in the last few months um i've definitely started listening to japanese trumpet trumpeter trumpetist i almost said because he's also a cornetist <laughs> japanese cornetist slash trumpeter teru masu hino i absolutely love this guy's playing um, not to sound weird, but I, when I hear his playing, I see myself. I, 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 I kind of see like a similar approach to how I would try to play certain passages and stuff. And it was really delighted to hear that, uh, I was talking to Eddie Henderson about him and Eddie was a huge fan of Teramasu Hino as well. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so fucking awesome to hear. Right. And uh, in a Zoom call, Eddie showed me a lick that he copped from Terumasu, uh backstage at the Keystone Corner in San Francisco. W what a story. Like, <laughs> I fucking love love it. Um, but yeah, no, great player, um, man after my own heart. But the reason why I'm bringing him up is, man, I have been watching so much of the Mount Fuji j uh, jazz festivals that occurred in the 80s. So much of it is on YouTube, and if you are not familiar, go on YouTube, search Mount Fuji Jazz Fest, you know, between like 86 and 92. Man, we're talking massive, massive crowds of people. Um, you know, they take place in Japan, obviously, so Japanese people f for the most part. The smiles on their faces when the when the tunes st start, the applause, the clapping, the dancing, it's just incredible. It makes you long to see something like that on a, on a grander scale uh, in the United States, man. But let me tell you, it was around the time that Blue Note Records kind of like reestablished itself. So if you're familiar with uh, uh, a night with Blue Note um, performance where all the, the heavy hitters from the Blue Note catalog uh, played, you know, uh, so for instance, like Herbie played with Hub and Joe Hen and Bobby Hutch and they played like Record of May and Cantaloupe Island and all that stuff. Um, it was around the same time. So you get a lot of the same cats. You get Jackie McLean, Woody Shaw, uh, you know, McCoy, uh, the VSOP guys, um, you know, a lot of Teru Masa, you know, stuff. Um, Chick Corea, acoustic band. Man, so much good stuff. So, so, so much good stuff. Um, I've been thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, and, and what's great is the younger guys uh, 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 at these concerts are like the elders now. So Bobby Watson, Ralph Peterson, uh, Philip Harper, Don Braden. I didn't even recognize Don Braden. He looked like a baby. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, uh, Robin Eubanks. Um, I'm trying to think. But, but you know. Y you get what I'm saying. It's just what a snapshot in time and what a great festival. I definitely want to investigate 
uh, into more about you know where how it happened, wh- why did it last for as long as it did. But man, uh, treat yourself, treat yourself. Get on YouTube, search up the Mount Fuji Jazz Festival, and check out some of those uh, performances. You get a lot of classic blue, I, you know, you know what I call them, blue note standards. You get a lot of that stuff. Um, and uh, it's just really cool. Really cool to see the guys. They're still in the prime of their lives, you know. Uh, still got it, killing it, you know. A lot of great stuff. So, again, thank you to the Internet for that happening. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, from here on out, let's get to the interview section. So I met Fernanda Franco uh, probably around the same time I met Rose Minkler, Josh Walker. Um, basically, they were, you know, um, cats at WestCon. And I was separated <laughs> by about 10 years from them. But through mutual friendships and collaborations, I got to meet them. And, and she was one of those musicians I got to meet and hang out with. She is a warm soul. She is such a talented singer. I'm glad that I have not only uh, performed with her, um, I've also uh, uh, been able to present her um, as, uh, as part of the uh, New Haven Jazz Underground. A couple years ago, we did uh, The Women in Jazz, which was going to be like one of the flagship performances had COVID not happened. I, I was really looking forward to showcasing, uh, you know, the, ta- uh, the, the very t- talented ladies of the music that I, I've gotten to meet and know and not know and not work with. But anyway, she was part of it a couple years ago at Cave Avene. We did the, the, the women of jazz portion of the New Haven jazz undergrounds, uh, jazz block party series. And man, what a great voice. Uh, uh, and, and, and she's, uh, currently, um, becoming a, a, a teacher. So we, we talk about teaching and, and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, I'm rambling without further ado, here is my interview with vocalist and educator Fernando Franco. And joining me now via Zoom is singer and educator and philosopher. Oh, wow. Amanda Franco. How are you, madam? I'm very well, sir. How are you today? Oh, doing well, doing well. Um, before you uh, before I hit record, you started talking about how you got sent back to school this week. And yes. so did I. So let's just dive right into it. Oh, man, you're starting with the hard <laughs> stuff. No, well, well, where do you teach? I can't remember. Um, so I teach at Booker T. Washington okay. uh, Charter School in New Haven. Right, so right, right. In the thick of it, you know, and we're a charter school. So we've actually um, we were in person for a long time. Okay. And then we had some some covid scares and they, we closed up for a little bit. And then, uh, they, you know, the parents kind of requested they were like, can we wait till after the holidays to come back? Yeah. And I was really thankful for it <laughs> as much as I know my students need me and, and obviously all our other educators. Right. It, it, it's kind of a, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's one of those like very, um, I feel like a martyr a little bit. Mm. Right. Well, it's sheep that to the slaughter of, is more, my is, mom, is, my <laughs> mom was like, what happens if you catch COVID? I'm like, then I guess I'm going to die teaching some kids. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, my, my counter to that is I have quite a chip on my shoulder because I have survived COVID. I have gotten in COVID. It is oh. not fun. And I got it. Uh, if, if I, you know, if the contact tracing was correct, uh, not to get too detailed to feel like anyone got thrown under the bus, but I most definitely got it from, a school and a school age oh, yeah. child. So I'm like, Oh, thanks for sending us in without vaccinating us. But what, uh, so there, they decided to send us back on Tuesday. So we had to go, we had to go in today to get like our brand new laptops and stuff. Um, Oh, you guys so, got, Oh, you yeah. got new laptops. Oh yeah. Well, Woo! well, luckily my vice principal is like a maniac in all the best ways. So he got us this like hundred thousand dollar grant. So we're all getting like oh, awesome. laptops. It's pretty insane. Him and I were talking today that it took a pandemic for our school to update to 20, 
2020, not even 2021. 2019, to, if we're to, really to, honest. Right, right. right. 2010, <laughs> honestly. It, it took a pandemic to get us to the modern age, which is yes. so sad. It, you know, like, I don't even want to dwell on that, on that fact. But yeah, we, we never went in. New Haven, um, New Haven has been out since March 12th, and we were supposed to go back n- November 9th, but we didn't because cases were up to like 9%. Now they're up to 11% and they decided we're okay to go. Let's in. go. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's a good. Yeah. You know what? It's not going to get any better than this. I said, to, let's you go. Know, <laughs> I, I was saying to one of my buddies, I was like, you know what? We might as well have just gone back in in April because what's, what are we talking about? So luckily front line, I, we're front line. Like they, yeah. they, they're just like, go. We need you to be in there so the right. parents can work. Right. Um, luckily, I still should have antibodies for a month, another month. So I was telling my wife, I was like, look, I was like, let's just hope I'm still immune. And then uh, by the time the immunity has gone, we've been sent home anyway because they don't have right. enough adults <laughs> to to man the schools. So I'm kind of like playing the, 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 the calendar game in, in that respect. You like that's literally all we've been doing. And, and I mean, I told everybody 2020, every time somebody said anything like, Oh, we got to change it up. I just kept doing, you know, pivot. Okay. <laughs> got to pivot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if you hear a crash, it's my cat falling into a box. I got a new amp yesterday for my guitar. And like, nice. he's, he's like, what is this? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, my wife started a, um, she's making home decor and she started, Ooh, uh, cool. yeah, she makes wreaths. Um, so uh-huh. we've been having like twice a day Amazon packages delivered. So my animals have been like, <laughs> like the dogs freaking out because the cats having a field day, put it that way. Cause there's all these gigantic yes. boxes, you know? And um, she, my dog, my puppy will probably be, you, you might hit her. Uh, she taps my, my office door. So you might actually hear her in the background cause she's got to know yeah. what we're doing at all times. They um, need to know they're the bosses, oh, right? Yeah. That's Absolutely. why I left the door open. Cause he'd yeah. be outside the door like, meow, right, meow. right. Exactly. Wait, can I take a quick moment to just congratulate you on your wedding? Cause we haven't, I haven't actually oh, thanks. said that <laughs> to you in, in you. real words. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, we got married in our backyard on our actual day. But so what happened was like early April, um, uh, the house we bought got on the market and, and we looked at it and we were like, this is exactly what we want. And, and we were just like, look, this was April. We were like, there's no way we're getting married in our venue. Let's just buy that move. It, it was getting to the point where it was like, we had to start paying bills or, you know, postponing. I was like, we'll mm-hmm. push it back a year and let's buy this house. And it was the best decision we made. So we got married in the backyard and uh, which is ironically enough, that's what I wanted to do to begin with. But because I'm the oldest, my mom was like, absolutely not. You're having a wedding. Uh, you know. And uh, so I got what I want out of it, <laughs> which was <laughs> which was great. But no, it was thank you very much. It was very lovely. And we're, we're adapting. So our dining room has been converted to Jill's uh, wreath making business. And I've got the music office and the animals run amok. And, and two days oh. after we got married, we got our puppy. So actually. The day we both got sent home from work, we got a kitten, and then we got the puppy two days <laughs> after going. the wedding. We just Too went cute. exactly, in. exactly. That's it. We, we really, um, you know, we really just like I had Rose on the show a couple of months ago, and she's like, "Your life has significantly changed since the last time I saw you." Yes. I was like, "I was like, COVID's been weird." Yeah, um, <laughs> it's it's been that weird dichotomy, right? Like I feel yeah. this. I I actually have gotten into pottery since COVID. Oh, okay. Quarantine. Sure. So. My living room has a pottery studio in it. Nice. <laughs> so it's I really like fun. That. Yeah, I mean, but also, I mean, on the the opposite spectrum, right? Like everybody's losing people. I I yeah. did lose my grandma in Brazil to um, COVID, or, or it was a heart complication, and yeah. I don't. They didn't count it as COVID, but I'm like a hundred percent sure. Yeah, that she got, she was in she was in the hospital for like two weeks. Oh, I'm so sorry. Know, so. I'm so sorry. It's it sucked, but the the cool like the cool thing, I guess, if there is a cool thing about it, is that I had time to grieve, you know, and I yeah, I didn't have to time go to into away. the public. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. You didn't have to put on a face because we're all like fucking struggling to begin with. <laughs> Hell yeah, can... everybody's what? just like very depressed. And I think for once, you know, my doctor was like, "You're depressed, but you know what? You have a lot of uh, excuse me, New Haven traffic." That's all right. Used to it. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the, the doc, my doctor was like, you know, you, you actually have a lot of reasons to be depressed. So, uh, you know, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, I guess it's good. No, I mean, I think, uh, well, cause you know what? The opposite is suppression. And I feel like a lot of people are feeling feels because, there's just too much to hold back now. And it's like, I, I am totally in support of people breaking down in front of others or in public. It's like, man, we all get a mulligan. We all like this, yep. this, this is everybody gets to just let it out and hopefully reset on, on, on some things. Um, back to school. What, what ex- oh, are yes. you, are you general music? Like me, or so I'm, I'm actually not teaching music. I teach ESL or oh, at this oh, school, smart we call it girl. ELL. Smart, smart, uh, smart, smart. <laughs> uh, I I wouldn't say smart per <laughs> se. Okay. Um. So I'm Brazilian, right? So I grew yep. up in Brazil, and then I moved here when I was eight. So I didn't really grow up there. I'm a weird hybrid esque of yeah. a human, right? Yeah. So when I moved to Bethel, Connecticut, mm-hmm. small white town, USA, from Brazil. Um, they didn't even have an ESL program at the time and they put right. me in special ed. Right. 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 Because, cool because that's the only thing they could do for you. They're like, well, she, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like, we don't really know what to do with you. So here's yeah. special education. That's what we do with all the other people. We don't know what to do. With. Right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the good and old I mean, days. <laughs> education has changed drastically. Thank God since then. Yeah. But um, the charter school that I'm working at, because you know, we're in small school environments and things like that. I actually, I wear multiple hats. Um, We are drastically understaffed due to COVID. Sure. And people keep dropping like flies, you know, that's the turnover is crazy right now. Mm -hmm. So I am teaching ESL, but I'm also teaching special education uh, Mm -hmm. and I teach kindergarten music. So today I did teach a music class. That's very Um, nice. And it's very hard to teach music to kindergartners because they want to hug you. Oh yeah. You know, so we we start the class with an air hug. Uh, I was just talking to Keenan Asbridge about this today. <laughs> he called me in the middle of this class, and and I was like, I called him after, and I was like, hey, uh, sorry, I couldn't pick up. I literally have no time to do anything. Like you, it is a hundred percent. You're looking at all these oh, yeah. kindergartners. A hundred like. Mask over your nose. What are we doing? Oh, yep. over your nose. Stand yep. at your red tape. You know, they have like a tape on the ground in front of the kid's desk. And, and that's where they stand when they stand up. Yeah. But, you know, they want to roll on the ground. They want to jump. They want to play. They want to hold hands. They want to do things that kindergartners do. Yeah. And Five-year-old stuff. It's heartbreaking, man. Yeah. Yep. But yep. they need it. They also, it's so cute to see them having conversations. Like I have a, like this, the beginning of this class today. We started with an air hug. And then after that, I gave them like each of them told me one good thing that happened during quarantine for them. Nice. Nice. You know, and it took forever. It took like 15 minutes, but it's so important. Yeah. It's important. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that uh, emotional learning is being focused on this year. That's a big focus. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny that you said the air hug because, um, I was thinking of doing the uh, uh, the the air high five. I thought we were all gonna. So that was part of my plan because I'm I'm key to eight. So I've got yeah, I've got you know the whole spectrum. They're only only K we through do a lot five. Of elbows too. Yeah, only K through five uh, is coming into the building starting next week. So should be interesting. I mean, the thing is about remote learning is I you know I got to use GarageBand a lot. So I've been joking yeah. the whole school year that like. I've never put out such excellent, consistent content in my career. <laughs> in my school, in my school YouTube channel is like dwarfing my actual YouTube channel. But it it's just like lit. your production skills I, have improved. I, I, I can't believe I can't believe all these con- like the kids will comment and they're like, oh my, they're like, I love listening to this at home. And I'm like, that's great. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Now, when we when we go back next week, it's going to be you know. Aside from the rising cases, what's driving me crazy is they just learned the routine and now we're changing the yes. routine again. And it's like, you hated being home. Wait till you come into the building and there's all these rules that you got to follow. So it's going to be quite, I, I do not expect to teach a thing next week, to be honest. It's really you. training. The first three weeks is training. Yeah. With yeah. them, you know, walk down yeah. the hallway, how to stand, how to breathe in masks, because yeah. the truth is, especially as music teachers and 
and just to speak is difficult in mass and 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 you'll you'll probably start to to get this too is as a teacher you have to find the right mask dude yeah like i've tried at least seven different masks um for fit for like how can i breathe and i my office is on the third floor of this okay. like old catholic school building yeah so you know the staircases are like slightly a little bit taller than yep. normal yep. yeah steeper yeah third right steep sorry immigrant uh no, <laughs> <laughs> no it's quite all right third but point. i like i like so, that you could use that you're like sorry immigrant <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Low key, just like slip that in there. Yeah. It's okay no, because. Right. right. No, yeah. Uh, so by the time I'm on the third floor, I'm like inhaling my mask, right? Yeah. So the cloth mask doesn't work. Um, some cloth masks, especially the ones that you put the filter into the cloth mask, like yeah. no one is hearing you at all. Like yeah. you're muffled. The right. KN95s are really good because you can speak and all that stuff, but it's it, it can hurt a little bit around the bridge of your nose. So yeah. it's like, Oh, that's Lola. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's finding the right fit for all these things. It's kind yeah. of crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to my, you know, my principal actually said to me, she's like, so what do you plan on doing? I'm like, well, I'm not allowed to sing. They're not allowed to share instruments or, or anything. So we're going to be doing a lot of body percussion, which is what I've done, at home, you know, for remote and a lot of humming, because at least with remote they can sing at their house now they can't so we're going to be a lot of a lot of you know stuff like that yes. and it will be I, weird but it'll sound like a catholic <laughs> church to be honest with you i hope you have really good uh acoustics in your room <laughs> we'll see <laughs> we'll find out today right yeah it's or been so long it it's been so long i can't even remember i was sitting there in there today and i'm like wow this room is actually bigger than i thought it was <laughs> you know because we've just oh. been in our own spaces yeah, right yeah it's, i mean it's definitely like it's probably three times as big as my office and i'm just like wow man this is i thought my you know my my office has been feeling cramped and i'm like this is quite nice i might i might be okay in here <laughs> that's awesome yeah, you know, we um today I was thinking I think next week I'm going to start working on and they're kindergartners right but I was thinking about having them draw or paint how the music makes them feel oh yeah mood, so that you're connecting stuff, yeah. some stuff yeah yeah and 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 also the e, the ELL ELL stuff that I mean that's why it's it's so smart that you're doing that stuff because my school is actually sick uh. 60% Hispanic or 60% ELL students. So like, man, I wish, you know, and it's primarily Spanish, but here's the thing. And, and you'll probably un understand this um, being, uh, you know, the immigrant status. We have, yeah. we have mostly Central American, right? A lot of Mexicans, a lot of Guatemalans, a lot of Salvadorians. And they speak Spanish. That's like very similar to what, you know, white kids in, america are taught so like those kids i can get through to like I, I at this point in my career i know enough spanish to be able to like get through the day the islanders we've got them mm -hmm. so the puerto ricans the dominicans forget it <laughs> and like what's that. funny is what's funny is the the parent liaison i believe is puerto rican because she's told me that like one time i was talking to her and she's like i gotta go i gotta i got a uh, a parent meeting with so-and-so's mom and um, she goes, and I got to clean up my Spanish because that woman's going to give me the side eye. And I was like, what? She's like, she's like the, you know, these parents, you know, s certain parents, they're like, they'll get judgy if I start dropping yes. syllables because I'm Puerto Rican. I'm like, Jesus, like it's hard. man. It, it's the, a whole, whole different vibe. Whole I'm so, so thankful. Different. Right. Right. I'm thankful that I'm not a native Spanish speaker because I get a pass. Uh -huh. Because like I was so I learned Spanish in Danbury. I learned Spanish with Dominicans and Puerto Ricans yeah. and Mexicans, like sure. all sorts of, you know, like all over the place. Uh, I used to work at the Y growing mm -hmm. up. I started working at the Y at 18. No. Yeah. 18. And then I, I graduated college still working at the Y. So I went through WestCon working nice. at the Y. And like I got hit on all the time in Spanish, and I was like, "Yo, I gotta learn Spanish. So I could shut them down. Like, no, <laughs> get out of here. No." To say no, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and <laughs> I speak Portuguese, and everybody's like, "Oh, isn't it so close?" But the problem with Portuguese, because it's so close to Spanish, um, we have some words that are not like they sound very similar, but they don't sure. mean the same thing. Sure. Yeah. So I learned slowly, man. I taught uh, bilingual biology at Danbury High School. 
Wow. So I was a paraprofessional. I didn't teach it, right? I just translated the biology, which in ter- like really I was teaching it to all the kids who didn't speak English. Yeah. Essentially what was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they didn't understand anything the teacher was saying at right. all. Right. But in turn, they taught me Spanish. Yeah. Which was yeah. dope. Because, you know, they'd be like, miss, that's not how you say it, miss. Oh, that's something else to miss. Do you ever have like nightmares? Like you wake up out of a dead sleep and you'd be like, oh, God. Oh, okay, I'm not at work. I'm because I, I swear to God, I'd wake up, I'd be like, "Miss, oh jeez," you know. Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm. Pa- I think I'm past that era of the trauma <laughs> of, of it. Um, I yeah, like, like I used to be really nervous about saying like, "Oh, the kids just call me Mister," but like that's what it is, and 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 that's the culture, and and it is what it is, and I'm fine with it. And so now it's more like I I I stop if they actually say Mister D. I'm like, oh. I appreciate that, <laughs> you know, adding that little <laughs> syllable. Um, my favorite is when they call me miss, because then I go, well, you might as well call me mom. You know, I had a kid call me mom right before lockdown. It was the first time in my career. He called me mom and it was glorious. Um, yes. and I did not, yeah, he was so embarrassed. And I've done, and I've, I, I've been there before. I called my fourth grade teacher, mom. She was a mean lady and she went, uh. she gave me an earful. Um, the thing is it like not, like on top of the, the the different Spanish dialects, what we're seeing in New Haven now, and maybe at your school too, is we're getting uh, the children of uh, Afghanistan, Afga- Afghan immigrants, Middle Eastern immigrants. I have I have two uh, t- their brothers, two boys. Their father was a translator for the army in Afghanistan. So he wow. had, he had a, he has like a death sentence. So, you know, part oh of like, God. part of the deal was you work for us, you help our soldiers, we'll, we'll put you in America. So these boys who have probably definitely seen war, um, you know, I think, forgive me, I, I, I'm terrible at this. It breaks my heart, man. Pashto, I think is what they speak. Um, so we're, we're getting, we're getting a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, Middle Eastern and, and, and Asian uh, dialects. And it's like now there's a need for, you know, uh, 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 teachers with with those backgrounds or knowledge, yeah. of that, you know, because it's like, oh, shit, that because that's going to be the next wave of of like kids coming in, you know, as like the browning of America happens, like you're going to find more and more teachers that are like by, bi, you know, bilingual, which, man, I am so jealous of. But it's like hard to find, man, because yeah, most of these bilingual people like they're not going to, to education because to become a teacher is a nightmare. I know, dude. They I make mean, you jump through hoops and pay out the butthole for every like, what are you, where am I getting this money? I've I did been, my internship, right? Yeah, yeah. Free a whole year worked for free so that I could get my education paid for. Yep. Well, my teaching still costs six thousand dollars. Yep. Fernanda, I've been teaching for 13 years and I'm still paying my student loans. It's obscene. I'm dude. still doing it after all the this time. Public service. Yeah. They should pay us like the army pays us. They, that's really what they need to do sure. because like it basically is. <laughs> and know? it's absurd. Like it makes it so much harder too. So I'm single mom, right? Obviously yep. I have an amazing parenting partner, so I am incredibly blessed. Yeah. But a lot of my uh peers going through my master's program to get my education degree they were single moms black single moms so they're driving ubers on the way to class you know what i mean like they're doing all this stuff and then we're interning which means we're actually teaching during the day from whatever seven o'clock in the morning till four o'clock we're working and then we have to work on top of that so we can pay our basic life bills right right insurance right. and gas or whatever it doesn't pay itself and then on top of that you've got the school fees the books the student teaching we eventually have to do deal with you know yeah and if you're someone like me and you are financially irresponsible then you can't <laughs> exactly get a loan to help you through all this stuff and that is commonplace in a situation where you know you're brown you're black you're most likely you have bad credit yeah. <laughs> at a certain well, I mean, point yeah you're absolutely correct and it's like anyone at this point it's anyone in our age group is, is in exactly. a similar there's like like 
you know, I had to, um, I'm not saying like, I'm not saying I got it. I, I had it as bad, but w- one thing that was a huge pain in the ass was Westcon said, my parents made enough money that paying mm. for college should not be a problem. You know, whether, right. and even though it was me paying for it. So I had to move off campus to declare like this below poverty level income to get more financial aid. And it's like my parent, my, my mom was a social worker. My dad was a cop. It's not like we were living in luxury. You know, it, it, it's not yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, you know, I was a doctor and lawyer parents. Like it, I, my right. parents were infuriated. Um, and, and, and they always, whenever they, so it took them forever to realize I'm still paying for my loans. They, they thought they would be forgiven. And up until like pretty recently, my mom's like, I can't believe they're not forgiven yet. And I'm like, mom, that's not a thing. And right. then, I've never really shared this too much because uh, it's kind of embarrassing. But apparently I had turned down a free ride to heart. <laughs> you and, yeah. Buggins. yeah. So what happened was I. I <laughs> that's hilarious. Dude. What happened was I was in this like. Uh, not all state, but kind of similar or uh, symphony orchestra thing, senior of high school. And the guy conducting it was a, someone from heart. And I was, I was like first or second chair in the group. And I, I was given a solo and he, and he, and he, he made, he, he distinctly talked to my parents and sure enough, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember this letter, but my parents kept it where they were like, we'd like you to come to heart on a scholarship. And I was like, no, mom and dad, I want to go to Westcon. And, uh, and so I said to my dad, I thought <laughs> lying for the longest time. And then they showed me proof. And I said, I just look at my dad. I go, why didn't you like break my arm, like threaten to break my right. arm if I didn't go to heart? And he's like, oh, if I fought you, you would have dropped out just to spite me. And I was like, yeah, I guess. But let's not talk. Don't you annoy yourself <laughs> thinking back? Yeah. Well, it's like, well, yes and no. I feel like no, because, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I, you know, if I, you know, I would have been a different version. You would of be a different but musician for sure. Yeah, it was weird. It was really weird to like be like, oh, my God, like what what is that like other version of, you know, there's in the multiverse. There's a there's an earth where I where I took that scholarship and went to heart and Lord knows yes. where I where I am at this point. But I yeah, actually it's, have a very it's fucking similar- expensive. Yeah, shit's fucking it's crazy, expensive. dude. Yeah, then, yeah. Like I actually, I got a scholarship to. Uh, sorry, what? I was. I was. Just they make say, you jump through hoops, right? They make you jump through these hoops. It's super expensive, and then they're not paying you a lot. <laughs> so it's like you know. I remember when right. I got my master's, they were like, "We can give it to you in a lump sum, or you can just go like to the next like pay scale." And I was like, "And the lump sum didn't look like that much." I was like, "Give me the pay scale." <laughs> I was like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, That's I thought so they were crazy. Worth more than this, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's absurd. It's yeah. absurd the amount of work we put in. But yeah, yeah, I had a similar situation to yours where I got a a, a scholarship to UDEL, University of Delaware. Oh, okay. as uh, uh, yeah, like I went there and I I sang "Rejoice, O Daughter of Zion," but I sang it like Lauren Hill would have sung it. Okay. And- <laughs> so they, if you don't know it, it's a handle. Oh no, they were super hip and oh, they, okay. they offered me a pretty sizable uh, scholarship. But at the time, and, and for contrast, right? My mom was a house cleaner, a single sure. parent house sure. cleaner raising four kids, right? Right. And I didn't actually have my papers yet. Oh. So at that time, my mom actually had been dating my stepdad and they got married around the time when when I did this audition and got the offer letter and like I had not yet received my green card but it was in the works like it was all this stuff and my mom was like you can't go because you can't get financial aid because you have a you don't have your your green card you're not an American you're blah 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 so like all these yeah Yeah. right so on paper she's like you can't do that Oh. And not only that, my mom was like, Delaware is so far. You can't go. You have to stay around here. And I was like, all right. So I took a year off. And halfway mm-hmm. through that year that I had mentally taken off, I was like, I, I was working at Dunkin' Donuts at the time. And I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. Like, I need to go to school right now. So I actually started at WestCon a semester late, okay. which, you know, threw off my whole schedule and everything. But 
Yeah. So like similar, and and I I I think even with that scholarship though to you, Dell, I think I still uh it ended up being cheaper going to Westcon. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, you know, yeah, the bubble gets burst once you start doing all the other expenses. But it's like it's nice to think about for a minute. But when, yeah, when did, you know, so there's an ultra. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. I go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna you know circle back to the there's an alternate universe in which Fernanda said, nah, ma, I'm going to Udell. Yeah. And looking back to like all of those things, none of those things mattered. I could have totally gotten, you know, loans and whatever. And yeah. it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, you know, all, all you could do is dream is right. Well, as well, says. Actually, when I'm it, not unhappy though. I met all no, these awesome you've people. Never come across, yeah. You've never come across unhappy and you definitely are your 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 westcon crew which like i got to meet like around 2015 2016 like beautiful people <laughs> you know so it's like you you were in like the right group at the right I time was. at school it's it's funny i always talk about especially to the younger guys younger cats i always say like man especially if i hear stories about people complaining about westcon i'm like man when i went there it was different from what you're describing because the people I went to Westcom with, I'm still like insanely best friends with. Like I yes. could I could call them all at three in the morning with a flat tire and not one of them would turn me down. You know, I, I literally did that with Zach Rosenberg uh, oh, wow. and he, he but it wasn't three in the morning. It was six in the morning and he came. <laughs> sure. Right. Right. But, but it's like I felt like there was there was like not a group like that for a long time until I met like your group, you know? And I was like, ah, oh, this reminds me of like the camaraderie that I experienced and, wh and why I have such fond memories. Like, you know, the, the memories of Westcon is like this balance between like some of the most uh, head banging against the wall moments of my life versus some of the yes. greatest. And it's like all the greatest are all the people, you know, obviously. And like the Absolutely. support system that, that I built, that you build, like, which is so necessary for as an educator, and a performer in our field, you know, to have these people that you could rely on, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of, but also uh, we were all we were all stuck in Whitehall together. Well, there's so that too. Yeah. <laughs> it was it's different. The the kids yeah. coming up now are in this beautiful, gorgeous building, you know, with all these different places they can go. They sure. they have this immense studio they can work out of. They have these practice rooms that are soundproof. But <laughs> yeah. Do you oh, know what no, that you, means? I'm like, what? Yeah. So we could you, literally hear everything. We played right. together, like across the wall. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You knew, you knew who was practicing. You didn't have to leave the room. You know, I would be like working on some trumpet shit, and I would hear, uh, you know, I'd hear a, a certain tune, and I'd go, oh, that's Shane, because I know he's yep. working on that tune. And then like down the hall, it's like I heard like a Charlie Parker transcription happen. I was like, oh, John's here. Cause he's working on that. Right. You know, it's like, you didn't and it was have longest. to. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking, you walk yeah. down at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Sorry. New Haven traffic. <laughs> yeah. They let you, you they walk let you at three in the morning. Somebody's like playing magic on the floor, you know, nice. like you join in, you sit down. Oh, I got my deck in the, <laughs> you know, just oh, sit nice. down. Uh, magic. The gathering is what I uh, got into for pandemic. That's my, I've always wanted to learn how to play. So I learned over the summer. Nice. I want so Andrew Zwart and I want to start a like Jazzers league. Like you like oh, like call me. This, I, yeah. but oh, I suck because I, I do it for fun, so I like hate rules. Like every time somebody comes up with a new rule, I'll be like, no. Yeah. But like Zach <laughs> Ross, who's the basis in fate, right? He's yeah. he knows every rule. No like wow. he's amazing. You okay. go into his house, his office literally has like a magic table. He's got two of them, I think, with like the wow. maps and the maps down yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's super serious. And like oh, I played shit. him early in quarantine. I played him and I was like, bro, this is crazy. He's like, Oh, oh, let's try a different way. So like there are multiple ways to play the game. And I'm like, yeah, I just yeah. can I just put this car down and <laughs> kill your guy? Yeah. You know, like that's so funny. Um, yeah, Zwart and I played like nonstop over the summer. Um, and we were like building decks and playing and playing. And then like, you know, Avery plays, Tom Keen plays, and we're like, Oh, I didn't know uh, Avery plays. Yeah, Conrad I plays. I should have expected though. Yeah, right. Conrad plays. Um, and uh, there's a couple other guys. And like 
I was, and so Zwert and I were like, okay, when all this fucking nonsense is over, we're going to put together a league where it's like, you know, uh, at the end of the jam session, we're going to go play in the back room, you know, and, and everyone bring a deck to the jam, basically. That's so dope. That's so yeah. funny. Um, I've actually gotten into Dungeons and Dragons. So like every other Sunday I play a campaign, which is really, this isn't a first for me because I, you know, I've always wanted to play, but magic, it's kind of, it's kind of like magic is the gateway drug, you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you start you start at magic and then you just go into dungeons and drag it's just a natural transition okay you know, or well, vice versa i suppose yeah it's probably only a matter of time if, if D is your thing as well uh you should hit up ryan Hom because he's apparently him and his brothers play a is lot. he a dm okay uh, cool yeah 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 i don't have all that much time like i don't know where i'm getting all the time to do all this crap but right i do it all like it, randomly throughout yeah. my well, that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, because I don't, I want to make sure we never, how could we forget, but talk about fate. Cause you guys, you oh, said yes. you have a new, uh, EP full length. What's coming yes. out. What's so coming we've out? been recording at Roxbury station with Mark and, um, it's been really fun. It's, it, you know, we're, we're working on the three tunes, um, shame, which is my reaction to, uh, black lives matter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know there man there's just so much to say so much history has happened in the past i know year yeah. you know and um it's just one of the like 19 songs that i've written <laughs> oh yeah I've actually, I, yeah yeah i i'm I've, going in the studio in two weeks to begin the like year-long journey of recording all this stuff that i've written over just 2020 again has been mm-hmm. productive in very weird ways like so i hear you i hear you yeah yeah and the musical thing for us as musicians that's how we emote this is how we process shit mm-hmm. everything right yeah. so yeah. when i like that music is my therapy like when i if i'm not and and i went through when my grandma died i actually went through three months uh, where I did not make music. Mm. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch a guitar. I didn't touch the piano. I didn't sing. I couldn't write. Mm-hmm. Um, early on in the quarantine, like I have roommates and my son, uh, because I was really scared and I'm an overprotective helicopter mom, um, I sent him to his dad's house because I was afraid that he would touch something in our house that would be conta- contaminated, you know, due to yeah. roommate situation and so i didn't see my son for four to six weeks something to that effect wow and i wrote a song and at the time chad was living with me chad um brown springer yeah and they were like they texted me one time and they were like uh are you okay yeah (laughs) because i was singing the song and it was literally just me like pouring my heart into the music you know when i yeah. when i first wrote it i was just i'm like crying as i'm playing guitar and i'm like a guitar is all wet and i'm yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yep, singing yep. because as a parent and anyone who's a parent can concur that like if you don't see your kid for more than like three days you start panicking yeah. your anxiety levels are like yep. you know and that was a nightmare and then you know that got cleared up a little bit we we realized masks were a little, at least relatively effective so yeah. i was going over there and visiting wearing my mask and it, it has been a weird life this yeah. past year i feel like i have lived a whole lifetime in a year oh, yeah. right yep. yep and the music is following that you know i've fallen in love with this amazing guy and we just celebrated you know one year a oh, uh, one year anniversary Thank you. Thank you. And, and like learning to be loved. Yeah. That happened. Yep. Uh, learning to love <laughs> again. Yep. Uh, you know, it's a scary thing and you fall off the horse to get back on it. Yep. And it's, it's a constant, it, it's just been a lot of like reflection and the music, you know, once I sit down and I write, it just like flows out, you know, it's yeah. musical diarrhea in the least, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> the least glorious way to put it but yeah i mean so i have a lot of solo stuff that i've written the only one that i shared was shame i shared that with fate uh because alex came over and he started playing the the guitar lick and and i just started singing to it and that's how um he and i write 
we he just starts playing and I just start singing and we're like, OK, that's a song. There you and go. at any given moment, if we're hanging out, we're writing two to three songs. Wow. If if we're chilling and and it might we might never come back to that idea, you know, but because like we have conversations, musical conversations and some of it we're you know, it, if our therapy can help other people and be therapy for them, too. That's that's what that's why we do what we do. Right. It's, it's yeah. to share these emotions, share these moments of uh, insanity with other people in a way that they can digest it, you know, and then yeah. some of them like internalize it differently than we originally intended. So that's even cooler. Yeah. Be different uh, to see it bloom, you know, of course, of course. And um, <clears throat> so you guys so you took some of those songs and uh brought it to the full bands or or did the band come up with stuff aside from what you were talking about how many songs are on the album there's gonna be three so there are two that we already we had written previously so the whole ep is kind of about shame in general in in three different ways so number one is is shame and and that song is about like, it's a shame that I don't know everybody personally. It's a shame that we're having to do this again. It's a shame that this hasn't been resolved and probably won't be resolved for a long time. And yeah. that's the the, the, the the song, Shame, right? Yeah. But then also, I um, we, we did, um, what is the other one, is, um, is about losing shame, is about finding oneself and, and, and being, you know... Uh, there for oneself and 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 that's cool um that one's an upbeat tune and that you know it's more like here i am and i i'm here for me you know and that was that's something that i learned is to to not be ashamed of of who you are and then the third one is jacob's ladder um aka wrong and that one is the one, if anyone's ever seen our shows, it's the one that's kind of proggy. It's that hard rock one. Okay. Uh, and that one is something you should never be ashamed of. And that song is about depression. It's about feeling lost. It's about being wrong yep. and not being ashamed of being wrong. And, and it's it's coming from that place of like growth where it's all right to be wrong. We're both wrong. Everybody's always wrong. Like our truth is not always the truth truth right um and it's okay to be wrong and it's okay to feel down when you're wrong and it's okay to grow from that like ugly uh like very guttural feeling and because that song is about that like every time i sing it i blow my voice out because (laughs) i'm just like you know yeah yeah Yeah. yes yes Yes. and and the whole band agrees like we literally can't play that song without going balls to the wall and a hundred percent of the time, you know, we all just like, awesome. we're like, man, I think my hands are swollen, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, isn't that stuff yeah, so great that's, though? That's the EP <laughs> for fate. Yeah. No, it's always dope. It's like, it's dope, man. That's how yeah. you want it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, and then uh, you, you, you know, not to put you on the spot, but you said you, you're toying with the solo project. I am toying with the solo project. Um, The cool thing about quarantine is that I've actually connected with a lot of people working on their own solo projects and little duets have occurred. Um, I have a song with Chad that uh, we're going to release at some point. Um, I have some several songs with Chris B. Amazing. Uh, He's a rapper Mm -hmm. and he's amazing and fantastic. And literally, I just love working with him so much and actually mark lyon he just released satanic yep. girls and i was on that and oh, um, okay yeah yeah that's right tune. i know i want to get so, i gotta reach out to him because i want to get him on the show because uh he just dropped uh, he would be single. hilarious i know dude. i know well because i i've known mark since like 2002 <laughs> so like yeah. we could spend a whole hour on just talking about like litchfield hall <laughs> you know so, so mark yeah. <laughs> Mark and I have a really hilarious relationship. We're actually in a group chat where we rap about poop. And it's uh Not I want surprised. you to ask him about that. I will. Uh, and I will. so literally we're like when you poop, uh you have to type a rap into the chat. And he's so obscenely good at this. Yeah, he always he has is been. Unbelievable, dude. It's so much fun. He cracks me up every day. So what's so. funny is like Mark 
was like always in the same wing or the same floor as a lot of the jazz guys at, at Westcon. And like, so we were friendly to him and you, you know, it's obviously a small school, so it's like hard not to run into people. But like, I remember people were like, this back then we called him metal mark he had like long hair he had like a a, a goatee down he, it was like longer than i think it is now but he had this like you know uh uh opeth i listened to a lot of opeth look to him or something you know i mean he still and does probably i know he still does yeah <laughs> um but it was always like that guy mark is kind of weird but have you heard him play or like have you talked to him it was so weird like mark mark was one of the people who taught me like really taught me in real life, never judge a book by its cover because like you look at him and you thought one thing, but then you were talking to him and he would talk to you. He talked to you, you know, the uppity jazz major about Coltrane, you know, and, and the kid like came prepared and he was like, yeah, but it means nothing unless you listen to Prince. And you're just like, what? You listen to Prince? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's you look a beautiful like, human, man. I, I know. He's so well rounded. And I was like, you look it's, like it's the, cool. you look like the kid who breaks the toys in Toy Story. Like, like <laughs> and you're talking to me how I'm wrong because I don't listen to Prince. You know, it was it was like always mind blowing. And I was like, man, Mark. And, 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 and I was so happy that he moved to New Haven after school because it's like, you know, he'll he shows up to the jam. He'll show, you know, I'll be playing a gig and he shows up and I'm just like, you're the best, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's such a yes. he's such a great soul. And I'm glad. I, I, I was completely unaware of anything coming out. So it like popped up on Facebook, you know, cause uh, you know, he was sharing it and everyone involved was sharing it and uh, like something with the independent, right. I think like released it or did like a spread on it or something. So I just like the other day yes. got like bombarded with Mark Lyons newest track. And I was like, Oh, mental note need to listen to this. Like as soon as I have time and get him on. Oh, the show. it's funky, dude. Cause yeah. Cause I, I have no doubt. And I saw who's on it. So I'm like, Oh, let's, let's get him on and talk about this. Cause this is like, you know, this has got to be great. Basically. I'm not going to lie. That tune is what pulled me out of my, my depressive, like anti-writing state. Yeah. So Mark sent me this track like months ago. Sure. He's like, Fro, you need to get on this. All right. Where are you? Like he checked in on me every week. Hey, how's it going? But he didn't, he did it in a way that wasn't like, he wasn't like poking at me. He'd be like, oh, Dylan just laid his track. Check it out. Oh, Gabby just sent me this. Check it out. And I was like, God damn it. I still need to write that. And I was like, I was just like in such a dark place. I was like, I don't want to write. I don't have anything to say. I don't yeah. know what I'm going to do. And then one day, finally, like, he was like, all right, I'm going to send it to get mastered soon. I was like, shit, all right, I, I, I need to do this. Otherwise, I'm going to lose this opportunity. And, like, Mark is fantastic and has been incredibly generous, always, always. He's yeah. one of the reasons why I moved to New Haven, you know, is because yeah. of the community that he builds. Like, he is a nucleus of, of community. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, he pulled me in, man. I was, I was an electron just flying in the wind. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to go. Oh, New Haven. So here I am. Thanks, Mark. And I was like, OK, I, I got to get on this track with him, man. So I sat down and my booth is actually in my son's closet. And I know <laughs> nice. that. <laughs> you could see mine behind me. It's wait. Is nope, that also a closet? It's this one. This, cl this there is you the go. closet. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. And it's blankets a deep closet. Up. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Blankets are <laughs> and, and yep. in the closet, you know, because I got my clothes and stuff in it. I have my lights in there and whatever. So I'm just like meditating in this tiny room and. I'm listening to this over and over again. And if you guys hear the horn break, oh my goodness. And Dylan actually came to my house. So I feel like Mark probably sent him, man. Dylan came oh to bring me some fresh lavender. So he has lavender. He's like, yo, I'm coming over and bring you some lavender. Sick. We put on the track. We were listening to it. I was like, man, I don't know where to put anything. He's like, what about right here? Where the, the horns break down, you know, there's some space there for a bridge. And I was like, huh. So here I am in the closet thinking, and I'm like, what am I going to write? And then it just came, you know, it just, that's how music, it just like starts yeah. painting itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. And it was, it was cool. And I, I just threw down, like, I think it was something like nine vocal tracks wow. with all different kinds of stuff. And yeah. I just, I emailed Mark and I was like, I'm sending you way too much crap. Dig through it. Take what you like. If you don't like it, you're dumb because some of this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you knew he would. No, but he, he would. 
yeah no he would he would never he he would absolutely you know never be like no that sucks bro blah, blah, blah. Yeah. but so it was really just for it was fun it was really for fun yeah and and he doesn't know this and maybe he'll find out when he listens to the, this podcast but like he he single-handedly well it's not single-handedly because dylan helped and and everybody involved in the project helped to pull me out of that that slump you know well, yeah, man, that's okay. that's the New Haven is a village vibe, and it, that that's what it'll, what will happen, you know. It's and I'm necessary. so glad to, I'm so glad to hear that. That is that is great, and it all all it does is pump me up to download that track like immediately after this because I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna wait because I knew it'd be good. I was like, weekend. I was like, immediately pushed it to Friday afternoon. I was like, when I when I clock out from school, that's exactly what I'm gonna put on first, you know. So I might have yes. to bump that up to tonight just uh based on the conversation and lastly <laughs> I, I i was talk. so glad i was so glad that you that you jumped at the 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 chance because i was like i i am very guilty being like a jazz trumpeter of like not listening to enough vocalists but there are a couple of records i do like and i sent you the lorez alexandria the great uh, mm-hmm. on impulse 1964 and i was like this is one of them that i do really love check it out. And you, and you, and you, and I was hope, you know, sometimes when you say that people are like, oh, I, I meant to listen to it. And they really just listen to like 10 seconds of like one track. And you were like, yeah, I listened to it twice through anything you want to talk about. <laughs> I was like, yes. So it was but- cool. And, and you threw me for a loop, man. I had never heard of her like at all. And as I'm listening to it, I, it just felt so at home for me Sure, because her style is my style. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and 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 as I'm listening, and you know, but also it, there there were just so many things like on that record. There's over the rainbows on that record, yes, right? Yes. And how many times have we heard that done? And who? How many right. people have done that? Right. right. But it it's a, it was it was so beautifully done. But I don't think she really went crazy. She yeah. held a very like it, it was a homey feel. She wasn't trying to show off for anybody. She wasn't trying to pull anything. It was just her singing and and just feeling the song, you know. It's, and I yeah, I felt yeah. that. It's got this like I don't have to prove anything vibe to it for some reason. Yeah, she just her, your that. audio cut out, but for everyone listening, you just went the yes <laughs> motion with your hands. Um, yeah, I found out about it because it's on Impulse and um, mostly known for Coltrane albums and, and Disciples of Coltrane. But I came across it because the um, the rhythm section is Miles Davis's rhythm section. So it's like, oh, I, um, I want to hear these guys back up a singer and, you know, with some other instrumentalists and stuff and, and see what happens. And that's how I came across it. And I was like, I really like this a lot. And yeah, my mentor, Eddie Henderson put out a record in 2020 early. Yeah. 2020. And he, and he played over the rainbow and I was, and he, and he said, I heard him in an interview. He was like, yeah, I've always liked the song. I grew up watching the wizard of Oz and always wanted to record it. And I was like, this is kind of like my favorite version of this song, mostly because I'm biased to him, but it, it, I think my other favorite version is on this record it's just so it's just it's it doesn't have like this grandiose vibe that i feel like somewhere over the rainbow always gets you know this big because of julie Gar- garland's version it's got right. a production instead it's like i could hear this in a club in a dark club you know i could hear the glasses clinking while i hear her sing this version and and i just love that like she's got that like billy holiday vibrato a little bit or you know like or yeah. all those of that era like all the singers had the uh, you know at the end of but the she, note you can tell that she strategically uses it at the end of her phrases for certain phrases yeah. so she's way more in control of that yeah um and and is is using it more sparingly i feel than than a lot of people it's do. not overdone yeah it's definitely not like you know all it's, the time because Billy, I, okay, and this is going to, people are going to stab me for this. No, nope, it's fine. Let it out. <laughs> the dark. Yeah. Um, I don't like Billy Holiday. <laughs> I That's don't fine. like the style. I can't, I can't, I literally can't stand listening for more than, you know, I'll listen to an album and be like, okay, sure. 
because as a, as a vocalist, just like I'm sure for you too, you know, we, I mean, we're listening to learn. Yeah. We're listening to understand. Emulate, we're listening yeah. to emulate perhaps. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like, I, I just can't, man. <laughs> Like, yeah, ah. no, it's it's totally but fine. But it's because I, she overdoes it. Yeah, I'm in my I'm, opinion. I I'm at I'm certainly of the f- frame of mind where it's like you are allowed to like things instead of other things, and and liking one thing doesn't make you a terrible person. So you know, a lot of times people would slam me on my. I actually have less knowledge of Clifford Brown than I do of like Miles and Booker Little and Freddie. And it's like, man, it's because like, if you're listening to mid to late fifties trumpet, like I want to listen to Miles. Like, I, I'm sorry. I know Cliff. It doesn't mean Clifford Brown is not like the goat. It's just Miles is my favorite. That's all. That's right. all, it's, you know, and like, it's a I hear my plan. Right. I hear myself in this style versus this style. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so don't, don't worry about that knock that nonsense off um, i mean no no no. i mean people are still gonna come stab me in the night probably but but like i'm i'm about so like a friend of mine actually put this really well we were talking about art she's like you can appreciate or you can not appreciate the art but you can't say that it's good or bad like oh, yeah. either you can appreciate it you know you can say okay i see what they're going for i understand it and and i do i absolutely like she is an artist it's fantastic what you know what she has brought to jazz vocalism you know and amongst other things you know just in being a black woman um as well socially you know that she she she's done a lot across the board and i respect and i appreciate that but i can't listen to more than one album of hers at a pop you know yeah aretha i'll listen to aretha literally every moment of my day yeah you know yeah. Oh, sorry for all the. No, nah, it's all right. No, uh, I love, I love Aretha. I love her. Like all that, uh, the live Atlantic stuff. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I every moment that stuff all of the time. every song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically. Yeah. Aretha is probably like the, the person I can listen to at any time, anywhere, any day, any album, any song. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. The only, like the, the, so like this Lorez album, the, the only one that's like kind of on the same level for me is a uh, uh, portrait of Sheila by Sheila Jordan. It's like a blue no album. It's just Ooh. like guitar. It's just like guitar. I'll send it to you. It's like guitar and bass only. Maybe there's ones uh. I can't remember, but it's like Steve Swallow and maybe Jim Hall. It's so fucking good. Nice, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so Send good. Send that to me as soon as I, we're I will, done. I will. <laughs> I will. And it's like my, I'm trying to 2020, I'm, I'm sorry, 2021. I'm trying to expand my palette a little bit more with vocalists and that and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to. I'll send you some Brazilian stuff, man. Please do. I, the, you know, except for jo, Jobim, because like my buddy, have you ever met Jared Caddy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was okay. in a band with Jared Caddy, actually. He was my drummer. <laughs> oh nice okay yeah in so, a brazilian jazz band a bossa band right right so J- jared and i he was my best man so we go we oh, go my, i saw that actually and yeah, i was like oh yeah, my god yeah that's yeah. so funny um he you know i think for one of my birthdays he got me two joe beam records he was always pushing that stuff on me and like that's really when it comes to brazilian music it's kind of like the the quote-unquote mainstream or more known albums are like the, the best yeah. i got or you know so i always love I always loved digging into like the, the, the deep cuts and stuff because I, it's just, I'm going to so send much. you some other shit. Please do. Please <laughs> do. You know what? You know, I'm, I'm going to send for... you tropicalism stuff. Okay. I'm due for uh, uh, a salsa kick again. So I love Willie yeah, Colon, okay. trombone player and man, Celia Cruz and all that stuff. I love that stuff. And it's been too long since I, since I did a deep listen. So, I mean, I'm due, for, I'm due for it. So please send it to me. I'll send you some 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 other stuff. So like it won't be bossa then. If you like salsa, maybe I'll send you some samba stuff. And and yeah, I prefer and samba. So some upbeat stuff, but also there's so you know how we have we have pop here, right? Pop music. Yeah. Brazilians have MPB, which is Musica Popular Brasileira, which literally just translates to popular Brazilian music. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> literally, I, I followed that. I followed that. I was like, <laughs> oh, she's about to say. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, there's some really amazing composers that now people are just starting to play at these jazz jams, like um, ah. Deja Vin. Okay. Um, Deja Vin is my favorite artist, I would say. And Seu Jorge, which a lot of people know, you know, uh, are mm-hmm. starting to, to get into um get hip to i guess is really what we should what i should say right right yeah this is jazz podcast Uh, you gotta use the language might be might be be. i'll use my jazz language no uh (laughs) so we uh, i mean we have so many really amazing musicians that nobody knows about yeah but some people are starting to get hip to it now you know as as we come through so it's all part of the that's a whole different thing yeah yeah i've been learning a lot of brazilian music on the guitar Oh, nice. Uh, and I got a Frank Brocklehurst. Uh, that was my my uh, my twelve hundred dollar. <laughs> the first stimulus, my stimmy went to Frank. Nice. Uh, nice. And I got I, myself I, a beautiful guitar. Frank is uh, Frank. Frank is also from my Westcon crew. I've known him a long time. I lived with him. Uh, we had an off uh, off campus apartment and I'll never forget. One night I was like eating dinner, watching TV, and he comes in with just like an armload of of wood planks, and he just <laughs> drops it on the in the corner of the room, and he's like, "Uh, oh, if the police show up, I don't know this stuff." And then he left, <laughs> and I was like, that's so if, if you don't know, if you don't know Frank, that sounds so sketch. If you do know Frank, you're like, yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, it no, it's like, cool. It was like illegal Brazilian rosewood or something. And he ended up turning oh it into a guitar, God. but he was like, you're not supposed to have this stuff. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, I'm not going <laughs> to snitch on you, dude. So don't worry about it. But like, you know, that's, that's how he is. That's Frank. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I called him and I, I mean, I saw Frank a little bit during the, the quarantine and, and, you know, at one point I called him and I was like, all right, listen, I've been trying to learn the guitar for like 10 years. And I had gone to his house cause he and I play together very often um and so we you know i i called him and i was like yo i want that guitar i saw in the corner of your house like six months ago yeah and you know the creepy thing is he knew exactly what i was talking about of course he did he knew exactly the guitar that i was talking about i was like you know the coral one that was in the corner that like antique but he's like yep nope it's at brian's i'll get it for you tomorrow wow so he set it up he restrung it he fixed it up for me and, and and he was like here we go Cool. That's so, that's so awesome. I, I also grew up with Brian. <laughs> so it's there like, you go. I love the connections. It's so great. Yeah. His, his yeah, older brother. Yeah, was we like, live like, in the same universe, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> Who would have thought musicians, no yeah. other musicians. Um, yeah, Amazing. no, that's, that's awesome. Well, I hope, I hope that, uh, you know, come post COVID we see you with the guitar and some of these original songs. I don't know if I can I bring get, myself to I, do this with a bunch of jazz heads, man. It, it takes one tune, one performance, <laughs> and then and then you build from there. And you know Mark is going to be on your butt getting you to do it. So you might as well just start practicing for it now. Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of support. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I just, it's got to practice. So we, uh, we're coming to the end of the interview. <sighs> It's been such a blast to talk to you because, again, like I say on almost every episode, this podcast is really like catharsis for me. It's, it's it, you know, it's a healing podcast because I'm catching mm-hmm. up with people that I saw at least on Tuesday nights at Three Sheets. So thank you so much for joining me. It's so good to hear your voice and hear that you're at, you know, you're productive and in the teaching and stuff. You, It's awesome. And, and, I, and I really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been really nice talking. Like I, I legit we sh- can we do this more? Can we just like have uh, conversations? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I don't need to like record <laughs> my zooms with my friends, but I <laughs> what I can't right, like, like do, let's do this. I, I'm telling you right now, like the the podcast is gonna keep going past COVID, and and when I've gotten like a solid number of episodes, I want to start having like people return with like other people at the same time and and have like you know like you literally and- everyone we've yeah, mentioned yeah. in this episode yeah. if we put all of us in one zoom but the problem is like that's not even like we're, we'll just all be laughing the whole time nothing's know, gonna get done in that case i mean with that stuff it's like i i kind of wait till it's safer and then we could all like be live together you know, even if we were outside, just because like the, the, the rhythm of the of the voices would be like perfect. You know, we'd just be yes. laughing through it. But uh, one day. Right. 
Yes. So, Fernando Franco, thank you so much for joining me on Mr. Millennial's Revenge. And Thanks stay in touch, dude. Me. Will do, man. All right. All right. I will see you. Someday. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Bye. Thank you. So that was that was episode 17. Thanks so much to Fernanda for being on the show. And uh, it's always a pleasure. Hope you guys had a good time. Uh, uh, as much time as we did, basically. <laughs> you know, uh, always great. You know, I say it every episode. It is absolutely a pleasure to catch up with everybody, um, you know, during this time. So uh, hope you guys have been digging the all the interviews and everything. Um, so. Well, uh, at the top, we were talking about it is now the era of Biden, Joseph Biden uh, as president, and we got rid of Trump. I just want to see him go down, man. Did you hear? The craziest thing is he was, like, selling pardons. So he pardoned all these people because they paid him for it. It's like the corruption never ends. Uh, it's going to be great when he goes down. They're going to have, like, a scene just like in – um. Uh, Goodfellas when everybody fucking gets pinched and popped and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I look forward to seeing that and uh, and all that nonsense to come. I mean, it, he's just the gift that keeps on giving, right? So anyway, uh, like I said at the uh, uh, in the bottom log, check out the Mount Fuji Jazz Festival footage on YouTube. Ah. It's just so good, and and while I was uh, editing the episode, I realized that a great a great uh, thing to check out is uh, uh, Jackie McLean playing with Woody Shaw, and they play I believe Cool Strutton, you know the Clark Terry tune, and it's just what a delight because Cool Strutton's a great record, great tune, uh, minor blues if I'm not mistaken, can't remember, and of course I said that and now put myself uh, on blast because if I'm wrong I'm gonna look like an idiot. However. Really hip, because I do know for a fact Jackie McLean's on the record. Um, I think it's Art Farmer on the record, so you get Woody Shaw instead, so that's a nice contrast. And that's what I always love the most about this stuff, is when you can hear different uh, different uh, members of the Blue Note role playing those Blue Note standards. You know, So if I can get a Woody Shaw version of One Finger Snap with Herbie, Tony, and Ron, I mean, that would be, that would be the the Ark of the Covenant right there. That would be, you would see me with the idol in one hand and, and the, or, or the sandbag in one hand. And instead of the idol, it's the CD <laughs> of that recording. And I'm just doing the Indiana Jones and then running like hell because there is no way <laughs> I would, uh, I would get caught and not being able to hear that. I'm sure it doesn't exist, but one can only dream, right? And uh, yeah, guys, speaking of cool records, I'm going to leave you. Uh, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is I managed to pick up A City Called Heaven by Donald Byrd. It features Joe Henderson, Bobby Hutcherson. It's from uh, 1991. It's kind of the sister record, uh, both on uh, Landmark rec uh, uh, Records. I am so pumped to listen to this. This is like late, uh, late period Donald Byrd, late period Joe Hen. Got it on the internet, discogs.com. I wish they would be my sponsor because for all the money I spend on their website, uh, they should kick me back something for sure. So, uh, <laughs> so okay, enough rambling for today. I actually have to do uh, an interview uh, later today. Uh, my next guest on the show, I never really announce them because uh, I don't want to fuck up scheduling. But I do know for a fact my next guest on the podcast is none other than trumpeter composer educator dave scott super excited to talk to him that'll be a lot of fun uh he is a complete sage when it comes to jazz so uh yeah so let's uh let's head on on out uh you know pour a cold one for joe and uh hopefully we'll uh you know we got into the light at the end of the tunnel and we'll start seeing some uh better you know good change in the world we need it so uh as always Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this has been Mr. Millennial's Revenge. I'm your host, Nick D. Maria. This is a production of the New Haven Jazz Underground. I'll see you at the next episode. Thanks so much. Take care.